brings you back to a sense of survival at times. You're kind of making your way along these streams and clambering over rocks. It's much more than just fishing. It's like an adventure. Once you do grasp one of these little prehistoric critters and see the bright blue and the red and the bright orange, almost everyone that I'm with, their jaw just drops. There have been a lot of first first fish pictures <laughs> that I've seen and, and they're usually accompanied by a huge smile. We're standing in uh, Pendleton County, West Virginia in the Potomac Headwaters, which is actually where my ancestors settled in the early 1700s. My family later shifted down to southern West Virginia toward the coal fields. A good bit of my family worked in the coal mines. Seeing the impacts on the natural resources that we had, and that's what led me back here to Pendleton County to restore the exact lands that a lot of my forefathers were settling. I always wondered why I had such a crazy obsession with fishing. I was like, this has to be something genetic. I think it's in our blood at this point. My daughter's name is Brooklyn Vale Wichterman, which means my small stream in the valley. And she has literally been on a trout stream with me from the time she was 11 days old. She's my four-year-old partner in crime. And we go everywhere together. You good? That looks like a big fish. Fish, fish. Try it again. Beautiful cast. She caught her first brook trout at two and three quarters. Pull, pull. I came to Trout Unlimited because my personal mission aligns directly with Trout Unlimited's mission, and that is to leave my daughter with better, colder, cleaner water than what I had. Brook trout need cold, clean water to thrive. Some of the things that impact brook trout are sediment and warming water temperatures, which have been a result of removing a lot of the riparian canopy. You can argue climate change one way or another, but what you can't argue is real data, and real data is exactly what we have. Uh, we are experiencing the warmest temperatures that we have in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia right now. We're experiencing severe drought and severe flood conditions on a regular basis. It's blowing what folks thought a hundred year flood was out the window. So as you're starting to see these flows come through, um, they're more flashy. So it's impacting these fish. It's not a stable environment for them to live in. And that's why we focus on these limestone areas, because they will be more resilient to climate change. There are limestone aquifers underneath of these mountains, so it provides this stable source of cold, clean water. And as you can see, there are large trees here behind me that we put in by hand, which I'm really proud to see. It's almost an if you build it, they will come sort of mentality here. So our thought is to improve the habitat, improve the infrastructure around these streams so that we can deal with some of these issues as, as we do see these more extreme weather events. You want me to hold on to your acorn? Okay. It is definitely a generational interest throughout my family. You wanna skip across the rocks with me? So to actually be able to walk along the stream, see some of the issues that are going on, and implement a project and see that change in a few years is just an amazing thing. Oh, there will be ice cream. We'll pick it up from the store. You have my word. We'll go to Yoakum.